So now how do I implement an object? Well, one of the things that we have when we work with objects is something known as a constructor. Now, this constructor, this is actually how we sort of build our objects. So we start off that same kind of way. Let's say, for example, I've made myself a student class. Now, inside here, this is where we would initially do our public static void main method. The problem is, we're now dealing with a, an object. We're not so much dealing with a program. We're dealing with a small little chunk. So before I even get to my main method, what I actually want to do is I want to build this thing called a constructor. And I do that by simply writing out something like this. Student Now what does this do? This, this student, notice how I don't throw out any uh, arbitrary, you know, there's no void or public static void. I don't do any of that stuff. All I do is I say student. And what this builds is now what's known as a constructor. So what happens is when I write the word new student, This new operator this new operator creates a new instance of the student class by activating this student constructor. And so the same thing that happens when we were designing out methods actually comes into play. What happens if I have a second student constructor. I'm actually able to have multiple student constructors. And this one actually comes in with string f name string l name. Oh. String l name. Well, one of the things that we had mentioned earlier was this idea that a class has things known as identity, states, and behaviors. Well, one of those things that we can do is we can create what are known as class variables. And let me put this in comments. I'm going to actually put it down here. Class variables. And what's the beautiful thing about class variables is there is no actual order to them. They can go anywhere inside the class. They all have that same scope. Now, uh, you should put them at the top. You shouldn't put the constructors first. You push it, should put your class variables first. But for the sake of space, I don't have that luxury. And so what I can do is I can say, uh, let me make a string first name. and a string last name. Now all I've done is I've declared these guys. Declared them. They don't have any value to them whatsoever, but that's where the student constructor can come into play, especially this first and last name one. Now what I can do is I can say, oh well, that first name variable that I just built, what I want it to do is I want it to equal F name and that last name variable let me just capitalize that that last name variable I want it to equal last name so suddenly what I can do same kind of concept now if I create a new student just like I would with a method Adam Gawita <laughs> that now is going to be my first 
that's going to be my last, or that's going to be F name. That's going to be L name. And those get passed into my constructor. So that suddenly becomes Adam, Goita. Those in turn, as you can see, kind of get passed on. They get evaluated due to left to right association. And so suddenly my student now has a first name of Adam and a last name of Goita.